Today, we're going to be going over different wide receivers' terms, terminology, and phrases that you guys need to learn. So the first one is going to be called getting skinny. So what does getting skinny mean? So this has to do with the stem of the route. It has nothing to do with the break point. It has nothing to do with our press release. It has to do with the stem. Now, quote-unquote, getting skinny is when we are trying to run as tight as we can to the DB. You essentially want to go hip to hip with the DB. So we could either restack the DB, which we're going to talk about as this video goes on, or get right next to him so you could use something called a throw by move or maybe lean into him, right? So let's play this thing full speed, then we'll break it down. So he takes an inside release on an outside breaking route, more specifically a corner route. This is a very, very important situation or important, I guess you could say like route situation to get skinny on. So you see how this DB off the ball, he's got maybe about like a yard or two of space with Cooper Cup right here. So he's outside leverage, right? DB who's outside leverage, his goal is to prevent the outside route. He doesn't want to let this receiver get to the outside and then break to this corner or break to an out route, run a fade. His job is to force everything to the inside where he has something called safety help, right? So a lot of receivers, what they'll do is they'll attack this DB's leverage outside and they know they got to take an inside release. However, when they take that inside release, they'll give this DB a jab. Maybe the DB moves, but they're afraid of the contact. They'll run away from this DB. So what that makes this DB have an easier time to do is cut off our angle, cut off our route because we're not getting skinny. We're not running hip to hip with the DB. Do not be afraid of the contact. If we try to run away from this DB, if Cooper Cup would continue to run this way our break point is still at let's say it's 10 yards that db could easily beat us to 10 yards and my route's gonna end up running right back into him so guys we want to have the mindset of only hand I need to beat. I want to take an inside release. My mindset is I'm trying to chop this inside hand and run as tight as I can to this DB. So you see how Cooper Cup gives this move. He doesn't pay any attention to this DB's outside hand. We don't have to worry about his outside hand. His outside hand is his recovery hand. Okay, fine. But the only hand that prevents me from taking an inside release and prevents me from getting skinny is that DB's inside hand. So you see how he just does a simple just chop, swats that inside hand. His hip and shoulder, he starts to dip his inside shoulder, starts to get low to run as tight as he can to the DB. That is called getting skinny because like let's say for example he has to run a post route easily from this position he could lean into the db and then break it off let's say he has to run like maybe a 10 yard out and this db's maybe a step or two ahead because he's skinny because he's right on his hip he could slip under this db and use that throw by move or he could restack the db which is what we we're going to be talking about next so let's play this thing full speed one more time great example of cooper cup getting skinny knowing which hand to beat which sets him up for separation on the route so now next wide receiver term that we're going to be discussing is something called restacking. So what does restacking mean? Some of you may know what it means. Some of you may not know what it means. And guys, we get a question on this probably at least once a week. Hey, what does restack mean? You say it in all your videos. So that's the purpose of this video. And we got a couple more terms that we're obviously going to discuss throughout the course of this. Now, before we break down this clip of film, you guys, if you're a wide receiver and you would like to train with myself and my staff of coaches this off season, we are going to be coming out to nine more cities across the country for two day long QB and wide receiver training camps. So guys, check out that very first link in the description below. If you're a local to one of these cities that we just discussed, we have already had six off-season training camps this year. All six of them were completely sold out. Then we're going to be heading out to Nashville next, Chicago, Buffalo, Atlanta, Houston, Philly, Detroit, Boise, and Los Angeles. Guys, all of these camps will sell out within the next two weeks. We only have about maybe eight spots remaining in each one of these camps. So guys, if you would like to attend local to one of these cities, check out that very first link in the description below. We'd love to have you out, guys, again, to one of our off-season training camps. Let's get back to this video. So now, let's talk about restacking. So what is restacking? Stacking, guys. So pre-snap, a DB essentially has us stacked, right? He is lined up on top of us in a sense, right? He's stacked over the top of me. So what I want to do on the route is I want to have the roles reversed. I want to be able to get back over the top of this DB. I want him trailing my back hip, hence the name restack, right? The DB has us stacked before the ball is snapped. When the ball is snapped, my goal is to have him stacked. I want to get over the top of him. So that's what this wide receiver does here. He attacks DB's leverage inside and he gets this DB trailing his back hip or his hip hips, right? So a similar situation to the last example. Remember, we had outside shade press and we had to run an outside breaking route. So that receiver or Cooper Cup attacked the DB's leverage, took the inside release and worked to stack him. And he got to that stacked position because he, quote unquote, got skinny, right? So now in this situation, we have inside shade man coverage. It's not so much press. It's more of like a catch technique DB where maybe he's like three to four yards off, but he's inside shade and I have to run an inside breaking route. It's the exact same thing as that corner, you guys. You can't force the release. So we don't want to just go and run to the inside side, have him get hands and squeeze me all the way to the inside. What we want to do is we want to attack this DB and take the outside release. And when I take that outside release, my goal is to get skinny to him 
hip to hip. My mindset is just going to beat the, I want to take an outside release. So the only hand I have to beat is the outside hand. So now when I beat that outside hand, I get skinny. I get him trailing me. And when he's trailing me, why is this important, you guys? Because I could make him miss at the top of the route. I could use a move at the top of the route where I give like this little open field crossover. I could give this little rocker step. I could give a hard cut to the outside to get him to bite the other way. And now I could get separation. Restacking is great for separation, you guys. So that's what restack means if you guys did not know. So I'm going to play this full speed one more time, and then we'll get into the next term here, okay? So now, next term we're going to be discussing is something called a rocker step. So in all of our wide receiver videos, our breakdowns, our drills that we talk about, we always will reference a rocker step. And some people may not know exactly what that is. So a rocker step is essentially where you are stepping in the direction you are going first. It's kind of like like think about like basketball, you guys. Like in basketball, you're trying to pay, you're trying to like um like like a crossover move in basketball, right? So you're dribbling the ball, you get a little one two, a little crossover. That's essentially what we're doing as a receiver, but it's at the top of the route and the rock. Rocker step is kind of the term for it that a lot of receiver coaches use and that myself uses, right? So you want to step, like I said, we are stepping in the direction I am going first. So if I'm running a post route, I'm going to step quickly. This is not an over-exaggerated step. We're not trying to step super far. We are literally trying to punch the ground with that foot. Shoot your cleat into the grass. So we shoot it down. That's one. Then we push off of that first step to the second cut. So it's a one-two. And we are trying to sell like I'm running a corner route, like an out route. So it's essentially a one two at the top of the break now let's say for example he had to run an out route and wanted to use this rocker step what foot would he step with he would step with his right foot we want to step in the direction we are going first so it would be a right left cut and i guys you could use this rocker step on posts corners outs and digs i like it anything where you could cut off of one foot past i would say probably five yards i don't like using a move like this on a slant or a quick out just because i feel like it can waste a little bit of time on those types of moves so that is a rocker step you guys if you are not familiar with that move, that's a move that we reference a ton in our videos, okay? So now, next thing I want to discuss, and this is more so like a phrase, not so much like a term or a wide receiver move. This is called pairing releases together. So in a lot of our videos, we talk about how great wide receivers will pair their releases together, right? Which means that like, so for example, you see guys like Devontae Adams do it a lot, right? So Devontae Adams off the ball, he'll give that little hesitation, skip to the outside, DB's here, maybe he sits inside, then Adams will go run a fade. And then when Adams has to run a slant, he does the same little skip, DB widens, then bam, puts the brakes on and runs a slant. It looks the same. It's hard for a DB to prepare against that. So this is another example of that. So this is an example of a um, like kind of a fake dive release, I guess you could say. This is a perfect example of a receiver pairing a release together. So a dive release is something you use versus a head-up coverage DB, and you use this when you have to run an outside breaking route. You use it on a fade, an out route, a corner route, but essentially what you do is you try to cross this DB's face for three hard steps. So you step one, two, three. And our goal is to try to make him think that we are running a drag route. So if you're a drag heavy team, you guys like to run a lot of mesh concepts. This is a release you could use. Not saying that this is a release you must use, but it's just an example of pairing releases together. So he puts the brakes on on that third step, but what does he do? Throws a little jab back to the outside. Make the DB think we're doing that dive release. So he might overcommit. Maybe he's seen it on film. Maybe we've ran this against him, whatever the case may be. So he hesitates to the outside and bam, I get some separation on it in route, a drag route, a slant, whatever I might be running. So that's just an example of pairing releases together. So fellas, if you ever hear coaches talk about that, myself talk about that, quote unquote, pairing releases together, making your releases look the same. This is what we mean by that. Okay. So guys, that's a fake dive release. Now also guys, if you are a quarterback receiver, DB, any football position, and you guys would like to improve your athleticism, ch check out the first down athletes YouTube channel. This is the username here at the bottom of the screen. If you guys search that up, we would really appreciate if all you guys would subscribe to our first down athletes channel. That is where we are uploading all of our speed drills. So if you're looking to get faster, different gym exercises that you guys can do, we're uploading long form content and a ton of short form content every single day. So guys, if you get some value out of this channel, but you're also looking to improve your athleticism, strength, everything, check out our first down athletes. That's the username at first down athletes. Just search that up in the YouTube search. We would really appreciate it guys. If you supported that page and subscribe to that channel. Okay. So now next thing we're going to be going over here is a phrase that I say a lot when it comes to catching more specifically over the shoulder catches. And that is something called late 
hands. So if you ever see a coach say you want to have quote unquote late hands, this is a perfect example of that. So anytime that I'm running a fade ball, deep post, deep corner, anything downfield, and I got a DB on my hip, he's not running with his head back looking for the ball, right? He is playing us. More specifically, he's playing my hands. So a lot of receiver coaches will always say, oh, ball's thrown. Oh, go attack the ball. Go get it at its highest point. And you want to do that. If that ball's underthrown and it's a jump ball situation, yeah, go get the ball, right? Don't wait for that thing. But if this thing keeps you in stride, you you want to catch this ball chest level. You want your hands to be as late as possible because the DB is reacting off of us. So if my hands are late, he's going to be a step behind and he's not going to be able to knock that thing out. And by the time he's reacting to it, I've already put that ball away. So guys, when you have late hands, that makes catching over the shoulder much easier. Trust those eyes, look that thing all the way in and keep those hands late when it is a deep over the shoulder pass. That's the main key, I would say, if you need to improve your deep pass catching.